Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lana. Happy birthday to you. So Lana was just an amazing free spirit. Very happy, bubbly personality, inclusive of everybody. Alana was um, very outgoing. She was um, always could make new friends anywhere she went. She wanted to go, go, go. And occasionally in between, take naps. Alana was my best friend. I feel like the word best friend doesn't really even cover it though because we did everything together. She would just talk constantly, you know, there was no, no silence in our house, in our life. She was very passionate about her family. Alana was the biggest daddy's girl I've ever met. Her father spoiled her rotten. <laughs> Alana was a very safe driver. Um, she made sure that both of us, or whoever was in the car, always had their seatbelt on. She was a good driver. She was a good driver. and Alana was supposed to go to work that day, and typical teenager, oh, I don't wanna to go to work, you know, it's weekend, she wanna go out with her friends, or I was like, nope, you have responsibility, you have to go to your job. And I remember shouting through the sunroof, like, love you, just cause I was leaving for the weekend. And she was like, love you back. And I'm so glad that I did, because I had no idea that that was gonna be the last thing that I got to say to her. And, um, and she left, and that was the last time I got to hear her voice. When we pulled up to the intersection, there was a loud collision with absolutely zero braking, um, no warning. And I will tell you, it sounded like an explosion. Um, I hate reliving that day. There are two left-hand turning lanes, and there's also a lane that goes straight. So three people got a green light to go at the same time. Alana was the first one to proceed. But her being a very young driver, stepped on the gas immediately when her light changed to green. The other ones paused for a moment, or it may have been them. When I ran up to the motor vehicle to see Alana, she was seatbelted into the car immediately started CPR. I will tell you the hardest thing about CPR is that, especially in a lot of situations, is when you know you've done your best, but your best wasn't good enough. And then the police officer picked up the phone and told me what had happened. So I was the first to be notified of the crash and her death. Called my husband and I just started screaming, she's dead. <laughs> What I believe caused the crash that day was the man speeding, and I do believe he was distracted through a red light and caused a hit Alana. The man that hit my daughter was 51 years old when he hit her. He had 7.2 seconds to stop. He never hit his brakes. I think I was just in disbelief. Like there's no way that that could have happened. You know, you hear about stories like that, but you never think that it's gonna be you. You never think that it's gonna be your friend or somebody that you love. It completely destroyed me. Um, I didn't return to my home for five months because her bedroom was beside mine and just walking down the hallway was too much. Then I finally came back home and I just closed her door. It took me two years before I went into her room. Because uh, I just couldn't bear seeing her stuff and not seeing her there with it. And I remember being a few months later, I laughed 
and the second I laughed, I felt guilty. Because how dare I laugh when I lost one of the most precious things in my life. I almost feel a little bit of guilt anytime something good happens and she's not here because I think to myself, well, why am I here and she's not? I never imagined Alana not being in my life. And when she was taken from me, the world, it felt like it had just stopped and I was stuck in place. It's impacted a lot. Um, holiday celebrations aren't the same anymore. Birthdays aren't the same. Family vacations aren't the same anymore. It's hard to watch my parents struggle um, every day. It's, it's not just a day here and there, it's every day. I, I've been diagnosed with PTSD. I haven't worked a steady full-time job in two years. A moment of distraction took my daughter's life. It took my happiness. Alana passed away two weeks before her senior prom, five weeks before her graduation, and seven weeks before her 18th birthday. We had prom coming up. I remember she had just gotten her prom dress in the mail in graduation. Obviously, she had gotten her cap and gown. And then just the next day, you never would have thought that she wouldn't be here. They called her name at graduations. They had her cap and gown on her seat with a rose. Yeah, I have so many tech talks. We made so many tech talks together. Alana's death was 100% preventable. I think that whatever you're in a hurry to get to or whatever you think can't wait, it can. That there's so much more to life than what you think is important in that moment. Shared roadway responsibility is a really big deal. Anyone can be a victim. We all need to play our part when we're behind the wheel to prevent these things from happening. I think that the man who hit Alana like if he was going slower, he would have had more time to think, oh, maybe I should stop. I'm not gonna make it. Alana could have waited. She could have stopped and not gone so quick when the light had turned green. Just because you have the green light doesn't mean it's safe to go through. The message I have for parents, for teens that are about to start driving is provide them with as much experience as you can while you're in the vehicle with them not only when they're driving, but when you're driving, because they will replicate what you do as a driver. I'm sharing the worst thing that's ever happened to me because I don't want it to happen to anyone else. I don't want anyone else to feel what I feel. Since Alana's crash, my driving has changed. Like my phone, I keep my phone in my passenger seat now, and I don't blare my music all the way up. I, because I know I need to hear things around me. I would say to use your voice and to speak up if you see something wrong. And if you are uncomfortable, to speak up no matter if it's your friends, your family, anyone. It put into a perspective for me that a lot of distracted driving can kill. She loved just walking around and uh, exploring everything in Harper's Ferry. So we continue that tradition to this day of making sure to go down there on her birthday. It's good that we still get together with the family and friends, but it's still not a, a happy day. It's a sad day. Everything that she is stopped the moment that she died. All of her memories stop right there. She will always be a 17-year-old girl to us, and that's all we got to see. She's so beautiful. She is beautiful. Dear Lana, happy birthday to you. It's hard, it's hard not being able to say in May. Yeah.